Jimmy Reid. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, and so it is that uh, I find myself as a democratic socialist tonight, supporting every word of the motion before us in the name of the Prime Minister, because the truth is that the preservation of our national security does not wear the colours of any political party. And I want to begin, first of all, by reaching out to all of those in our country who do not support the retention and renewal of the UK's nuclear deterrent. This is a frequently polarised debate, but I want to say to those who oppose renewal that I understand how and why you feel the way that you do. I understand how and why your opposition to nuclear weapons motivates you to vote and act in certain ways, and I understand your fears. Uh, like those people I described, Mr Deputy Speaker, and like every defence worker, trade union representative of defence workers, and the people who live in these communities where jobs are so valued, I hope for a world free of nuclear weapons. I wish that we could uninvent these weapons of mass destruction, but we cannot and will never be able to do so. The world is an increasingly difficult and challenging place. The complexities we face in international affairs, foreign relations and diplomatic matters are increasing, not receding. And even if there was a mood sweeping our country which saw unilateral nuclear disarmament as desirable, I would argue against such a move. Multilateralism is the only way forward for our country. We can and should only divest ourselves of our nuclear weapons when those who seek to do us harm also divest themselves of their nuclear arsenals too. The arguments for a multilateral approach with regard to the UK's nuclear deterrent, our obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, our responsibilities towards our allies, global security and more are compelling. An American diplomat told me recently that there was an emerging view in the left and right of American politics that the United States is tired of both fighting and paying for Europe's safety. And there's an emerging view amongst other American politicians in Congress and elsewhere that its European partners are not pulling their weight. And there's already a long-term diplomatic pivot taking place with regard to US foreign policy. Other alliances outside of Europe are being sought and established. This is the right of the US, but we risk the strategic relationship that we have enjoyed with them if we conspicuously fail to make the necessary steps to maintain our own nuclear deterrent. And alongside this, we have a belligerent Russia on the borders of the European Union, a Russia that is only now replacing its nuclear fleet, but renewing it with a new program of research, development and manufacture for a new generation of nuclear missiles. Uh, but more concerning is the fact that the Russian military has changed its nuclear engagement protocols. And these new changed protocols permit the use of nuclear weapons in a conventional conflict in order to achieve de-escalation. An incredible proposition, but true nonetheless. Is this the time with a weaker un European Union, an exasperated United States and a sabre-rattling Russia for the United Kingdom to abandon its nuclear deterrent? No, it is not. And it's the policy of the Labour Party... Of course, anyway. But obviously the Honourable Member supports the renewal of Trident. Have you any idea why your colleagues in the Scottish Parliament don't? That's a matter for my friends in the Scottish Parliament. It's the policy of the Labour Party to retain and renew our nuclear deterrent. And as a Labour Member of Parliament, steeped in my party's traditions, proud of its achievements and excited by its possibilities, I will be supporting my party's policy tonight. But for the first time, I think, ever, we have witnessed the leader of the Labour Party stand at the dispatch box of this House and argue against the policy of the party that he leads. This is unprecedented. Moreover, this reckless, juvenile, narcissistic irresponsibility makes me fearful for the future of the party that I love. The sheer stupidity of this approach should be dragged out into the light and seen for what it is. Because not only is renewal Labour Party policy, it's the settled will of the country and every parliamentary decision relating to it will have been taken by 2020. Further to this, as Lord Kinnock has repeatedly warned, and it looks like he's going to have to save the Labour Party for the second time in my lifetime, the British people will not vote for unilateral disarmament, and that reality has to be dealt with. Because a policy of unilateral nuclear disarmament is a bar to becoming elected. A democratic socialist party with this policy can campaign to rid this country of poverty, to restore the National Health Service, to rebuild our economy and to make sure that every man, woman and child in every community in our, in, in our country enjoys equality of opportunity. But campaigning is all that it will ever do, because a policy of unilateral nuclear disarmament will ensure that we will never govern. This logic is inescapable and the leader of the Labour Party knows it. And so it highlight the point that there's a little folly in your argument there. If you look at the SNP, who have got 56 out of 59 seats here, and in Scottish Government, we all hold the position of unilateral disarmament. So if I can may just say that to give you some hope, we're doing what you're hoping that your party can do in the future. I commend the Honourable Gentleman for that audacious and fundamentally incorrect intervention. I really do applaud his audacity. But the logic is inescapable, and the leader of the Labour Party knows it. And so we're forced to accept 
that the refusal to support the established policy of the Labour Party and to acknowledge the achievements of the greatest Labour government is not just a knowing embrace of electoral defeat, but a very real, a very studied and a very determined desire to split this Labour Party. The manifesto I stood on at the last election pledged to renew our nuclear deterrent. The manifesto that I will stand under at the next election will pledge to renew our nuclear deterrent, whether or not this leader of the Labour Party likes that or not. And that will be true, that will be true, Mr Deputy Speaker, of hundreds of colleagues on these benches. And I urge all colleagues on the Labour front bench tonight to respect the democratic processes of the Labour Party, to respect the conference decision of the Labour Party, to vote with the established policy of the Labour Party. And if you cannot do that, return to the back benches.